Hi everyone. Today we're going to analyze sentence stress and chunking as part of spoken language. First, before we move on, I'd like you to listen to two extracts. Both say exactly the same thing, but they're said in different ways. Which one do you find easier to comprehend and why? Extract one. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Paul and today I'm going to talk to you about the dangerous effects that plastic has on marine life. Extract two. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Paul and today I'm going to talk to you about the dangerous effects that plastic has on marine life. Now then, which did you find clearer? I think most of us would have found the second example easier to follow than the first. What I plan to do today is to explain what is happening in this extract and provide other examples to help you understand the importance of it. Let's start with the first of the two topics, sentence stress. Languages are broken into two types, syllable-timed languages and stress-timed languages. In syllable-timed languages, you focus on each syllable with the same amount of stress and time. As you can hear from the second example, English follows the second type of language, stress timed. This means that some words are stressed more than others. What do we mean by stressed? Well, by stressed, I mean words which are pronounced a bit stronger or longer than others. A good place to start is by asking ourselves which words do we normally stress? Let's take a look at the second part of our example we used before. And today I'm going to talk to you about the dangerous effects that plastic has on marine life. Which words do you think are stressed in this sentence? Well, in this case, the words today, talk, dangerous, effects, plastic and marine life are stressed more than the other words in the phrase. So we can see that adverbs in this case, today, are usually stressed. Also, verbs are usually stressed. In this case, the main action verb in the clause is talk. You'll see that the auxiliary verb be and going to are not stressed. This means our pronunciation of them is much more relaxed and much quicker. It sounds like this, I'm gonna. Finally, you'll notice that adjectives and nouns are also often stressed. In this case, dangerous effects and marine life. Here's a chart to help you understand more. In general, the main rule is any word type which provides meaning. If you look at the other words in this clause, in particular, you, to, and the, these words are called structure words. They don't give us any help in understanding because they don't provide us with any content, any meaning. Look at the following example. I've gone to school. If we take out the structure words, you can probably still guess the meaning. However, if you take out the content words, you won't be able to figure out the meaning. You'll find that these structure words are therefore weak in the pronunciation. For example, I've is pronounced of, and to is pronounced t. Here is another chart to help you see other examples of structure words. One last point before we move on to talk about chunking is that we can change the meaning of the sentence by deciding which word to stress in terms of content. Here's an example to demonstrate this. Which words do you think should be stressed? Trey didn't steal the bike. So the words would be tray, steel, and bike. However, we could change the meaning of this sentence based on which word to stress in the sentence. For instance, Trey didn't steal the bike. Someone else must have done it. Or Trey didn't steal the bike. For example, he only borrowed it. Or one final example would be Trey didn't steal the bike. So he must have stolen something else. Let's move on to talking about the other important thing to remember when speaking, chunking language. So what do I mean by chunking? Well, in the first example at the start of the video, we heard a speaker who never stopped or paused. This meant that all the words came out really fast and you probably couldn't tell the difference from one main idea to another. This is why we need chunking. 
chunking is grouping words together that communicate a single idea. It allows the person listening to gather the details and follow what you're saying in a logical way and it also helps to create a bit more variety in your tone of voice. This is important for all forms of speaking, but especially in presentations in which you really want the audience to understand what you mean. The way we chunk is by separating ideas with a pause or change in tone. First, let's take a look at our original example without chunking. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Paul and today I'm going to talk to you about the dangerous effects that plastic has on marine life. Now let's listen to the same example using chunking. Let's see if you can hear where the pauses are and figure out why we pause there. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Paul and today I'm going to talk to you about the dangerous effects that plastic has on marine life. The second example is clearer, right? This is because of the use of the voice and pauses in chunking. Notice that the chunks don't always come only when we would have a comma or a full stop. Chunking language is grouping together any phrase which has meaning on its own. So when we're practicing, we only use one slash for short pauses and two slashes for longer ones. The longer ones are used like a full stop. It's when we've finished an idea and want to move on to another. Have a look at the following example. I'm going to say it out loud to you, but first pause the video, read it and guess where you think the shorter and longer pauses should go. Ready? Here is the answer. My favourite football club is Liverpool. The season from 2017 to 2018 was a special one. We finally got to play in the Champions League final, but unfortunately we lost to Real Madrid 3-1. It didn't help that our best player, Mo Salah, got injured. So there are three main ideas mentioned here. One, my favourite football club is Liverpool. Two, talking about this season. And three, talking about the final. So these ideas are split up by longer pauses. It helps the listener realise that we've finished talking about one idea and now we're moving on to another. Just like the full stop in a sentence. But th within those three sentences, we also have phrases of meaning. Each of these phrases are also split by shorter pauses, such as in the second sentence. This season, from 2017 to 2018, was a special one. In summary, it may take you a long time to perfect the use of chunking and sentence stress. However, the more you practice, the more fluent this will become, and the easier it will be to understand your ideas when you speak. My main tip is to start thinking about each of these things while you're watching your favourite Netflix series or your favourite Marvel film. Think about which words are being stressed and how it changes the meaning of what the actor is trying to say. Also, think about how that actor chunks together meaningful phrases and how that makes it easier for you to follow. The more you listen, the more you learn and then you'll be able to imitate when you speak. I hope this has been of some use to you. See you next time.